Wild geese flying north. It'll soon be spring. It'll soon be time to plant a garden, gather wild greens in the meadow, I want to have something to eat besides dodger cake and rabbit stew. Oh, it'll be good to have something good again. I hope... I heard them. Wasn't light enough to follow them with the gun sights yet. Besides, they were too high to risk wasting the powder and the shot. Well, it's been a bad year. For the game, as well as for us. Well, at least winter's nearly over. We can start plowing soon. With all the new land you cleared since fall, we ought to have room enough to grow plenty for next year. If the weather holds, so things will grow. If you can keep the raccoon and the deer from eating what does grow. If things will turn out all right. Well, it has so far. With all the hard times we've had since we left the settlement, every year's been a little easier than the last. Yeah, so it has. And if our luck holds, perhaps we'll... Yeah, we need some wood. Better get some help around here. Rebecca, Timothy, Grace, come on down here. Rebecca, Rebecca O'Connor. Yes, Pa, I know, I know. There's work to be done. Oh, come on, Grace, get up. Grace, get up. Timothy? Huh? Work started early and lasted late for pioneer families like the O'Connors, far removed from the easier life in the settlements in the American colonies. In 1760, Boston and New York were already thriving cities, and Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Charleston were also established communities. More and more people were moving out toward the west from these rapidly growing centers along the coast. Some of them simply sought adventure. They scouted, hunted, or trapped, but did not settle down. Others wanted freedom from the unjust restrictions they felt they suffered under English rule. But many, like the O'Connors, were led by the dream of settling on the rich farmlands available for those individuals independent enough in spirit and strong enough in body to brave the hardships of the colonial frontier. My name is Rebecca O'Connor. I was 17 years old last month, old enough to do all the family wash, and I hate it. Standing over a steamy wash kettle in the hot sun, bringing out heavy, wet homespun. Timothy, my brother, thinks he has a big job, carrying rocks out of the field. But when you're only six years old, you can leave the big rocks for someone else. My sister Grace, who's 10, does the cooking for the noonday meal. Well, if you can call corn dodger and nothing else a meal. She mixes cornmeal batter and pours it in a pan, sets it over the coals and lets it cook, and that's it. That's what we have to eat. That's our pa, Jerome O'Connor. The real heavy jobs fall to him, the jobs that take muscle as well as knowing how. And that's our ma, who works in the field with pa, runs the house, spins cloth for our clothes, and doctors us when we're sick. Ma's pride and joy is our house. It's made of long, straight logs, pa cut and notched together, and then chinked with mud to keep out the draft. Inside, there's more mud chinking between the logs. Sometimes the mud falls out. It doesn't matter if it falls on the floor, because the floor is made of dirt. You never worry about sparks from the fireplace setting fire to a dirt floor. 
that fireplace was built from rocks carried out of our own field, stuck together with clay from the banks of the creek. Nearly everything we own we made ourselves, and most of it is in this one room. We store our belongings on pegs driven between the logs, or on shelves built on the wall. Pa made all the furniture, the table, chairs, and benches. And Ma made the mattresses filled with corn shucks and the homespun quilts we have on our bed. It's not fancy, but oh, I guess there's not a better built house on the whole frontier. Becca! Oh, I was just resting a minute, Ma. Never mind that. Help me get your pa to the house. He slipped when he was prying out a rock. I think he's broken his leg. Timothy! Hey! leg has to be set. And I can't do it by myself. I know you can't. Just tell us what we have to do. You've got to pull that foot until the ends of the bone snap into place. And then hold it until you've bound a splint to the leg. Rebecca, I can't hold it much longer. We need another one, Carl. I'm sorry. We had to find a way to survive when the strongest of us was helpless. The way we found was working, working harder than we'd ever worked before. Everybody pitching in to fill the gap left when Pa couldn't do his share of the chores. There was no time to feel sorry for ourselves and no one we could turn to for help. Having enough food for winter was a matter of life or death. So we set about getting in a crop. We'd save seeds from what we grew last year. And from those seeds came beef, and beans, and potatoes, things we could store away. There was corn for roasting ears now, and later, when it was ripe and dry, for grinding into cornmeal. We took over the jobs Pa had done, but we kept right on with the ones we had always had. Ma made jam from wild fruits and berries that Timothy and Grace had gathered. I washed and carded wool we had sheared from the sheep. We were going to need clothes as well as food next winter. As soon as he could sit up, Pa got busy making shoes for us from the deer skin he had tanned the winter before. He made himself a crutch, too, and I'm just sure he was up and around on that leg when we were out of the house. I felt pretty useless myself sometimes, especially trying to milk a cow that didn't want anyone but Pa to come close to her. Everybody had to pitch in and help at soap making time. And we would pick a day when the smoke just seemed to follow you around to get in your eyes. We needed wood, wood, and more wood to keep the fire hot enough under the kettle. We were melting down fat we had trimmed from meat. Somebody had to keep stirring all the time. The stirring didn't get any easier when Ma added lye solution, made from soaking wood ashes in water, 
and the stuff in the kettle started getting thick. Lifting that heavy kettle without Pa's help took all our strength. We had to watch to keep from dropping it before we got the soap to the cooling trough. By the time we poured the soap, we all knew we'd put in a good day's work. I guess that's why, when we cut it into cakes, we felt that this was more than a batch of soap. It was proof somehow that people can do what has to be done. Nights when it was my turn to sit up in the field with my apron full of rocks to throw at raccoons slipping in to steal our corn. Oh, I thought I'd never been so tired. And I wasn't the only one. Grace would nod over her darning till I thought she was going to fall asleep and lose the needle. You can find another acorn to hollow out for a thimble or twist more thread by hand. But if you lose your only needle out here in the wilderness, you might have to wait a year till a traveling peddler came by to sell you another one. Not that we'd have money to buy one. All the cash we get is from skins of animals paw traps. And trapping was poor last winter. We'll be lucky if we can sell these to the peddler for enough to buy tea and the powder and shot we have to have. Even Timothy shows the strain. It's up to him to keep the fire going. That's a man-sized job. If the fire goes out, night or day, we'll be without heat for cooking or anything else. So he sleeps by the fireplace and catches a wink when he can. The weather's been good all season as the crops were growing. But now at midsummer, when the grain is ripe, rain clouds show up to plague us. We've got to get the grain put into sheaves, which can be stacked so they shed rain and keep the kernels from being pounded off. Oh, it's hard for Ma to get the trick of swinging that heavy cradle to cut the grain. harder yet for me to get the knack of binding the sheaves with straw. I try to do it the way Pa said it should be done, but it seems like I'm all thumbs. Luckily, we have four hands to follow along and glean what we miss by our clumsiness. All of us work as fast as we can, bracing against the rain. We can't afford to lose a kernel of this crop. A few drops of rain splatter my dress. I think to myself, we're licked. The rain will ruin the grain we've worked so hard to grow. And then the sheath is taken out of my hand. Pa, you, you shouldn't even be on that lake yet. There's work to be done. Crippled as he is, Pa is back with us. Oh, and somehow, we all know we're going to make it. Sure enough, the rain holds off. And with all of us working together, 
we get the grain protected from the storm. When the rain does come, we catch up on the things we've mostly had to put off this year. Things like schooling. Ma gets out the horn book and the New England primer and puts the younger ones through their lessons. Timothy's still learning from the horn book. It's just a single sheet of paper with the ABCs and the Lord's Prayer. The paper is so scarce out here that it's mounted on a wooden frame and covered with thin strips of deer horn, which lets you see through to the printing but keeps the valuable paper from getting soiled or torn. Grace has already moved up to the New England primer and she reads it very well. My book and heart must never part. Now summer is nearly over, and Pa is able to help us gather in the corn. If his leg hurts, he doesn't complain. He's too glad to be doing some of his share again. The rest of us have nothing to complain about. like there's going to be food enough to last us all winter long. We walked with lighter steps when we came in from the field that day. For the first time in months, Timothy and Grace got out their toys to play. Grace dusted off Miriam, the corncob doll Ma had made for her. And Timothy started tooting away on a whistle Pa had whittled out for him. The O'Connors were among those people who founded a new nation. When the Declaration of Independence was written in 1776, the American colonies became the 13 original states. The United States grew as its frontiers pushed westward adding all the land which makes up the 50 states we have today. In their turn, the children of the colonial frontier moved westward, and their children and their children's children continued the story of independence and self-reliance on other American frontiers. And with the girls be handy! <laughs>